Hi guys, Pets here from 11 Bravo Gaming with another Capture Flag strategy video for you. This is going to be one of the most in-depth videos that I've done so far and it might be one of the more in-depth ones that I do. I'm going to be talking a lot about overall team Capture Flag strategy as it applies to Battlefield 3. Uh, we're going to be talking about force multipliers because that's a big factor when you're playing this. Um, force multipliers, I'll put the definition up on screen. Uh, basically it is something that makes a unit more powerful than it otherwise would be. So there are uh, five force multipliers, kind of four, kind of five on this map. Uh, the Little Bird Scout Helicopters, uh, the main battle tank, the Azrad or the AA Jeep, uh, the dirt bikes, and I will add in a fifth force multiplier, which is uh, being in an entrenched position or basically being on defense. Uh, so the attackers going against the defenders are at a disadvantage because the defenders know they're coming. Uh, what they don't know is where they're coming from all the time, but you generally have a pretty good idea they're coming from their spawn. Now this map provides a lot of opportunities for them to flank around behind uh, in depth, meaning getting really far behind our flag and, and back to our vehicle spawn uh, when they're attacking us. Uh, so that is a, a little bit of an equalizer. And we struggle for, with that in this game, uh, with the enemy does a really good job of getting behind us. Uh, but what we do also is we go up 2-0 early on. like we. We get uh, two flag caps right away, and we stop them from taking our flag um, for a long time. And I think uh, that kind of leads me into talking about the overall strategy as a team. I ideally, you're going to have as few defenders as possible. And I think the biggest way you can do that is to maximize your force multipliers. So this tank, for example, is going to sit on defense for the whole game. Uh, for most of the game. And what I'm going to do with this tank is keep it in base to pro to basically beef up our defenders. I'm not going to cross this line on the map unless I have to. And at the same time, I'm going to let the attackers go and do all the work past there. Um, because this tank can act as five or six defenders with just one or two people in it, I... I it's such an advantage that we can then take those extra resources and apply them to the attacker. And that's what we do early on. We only have, I think, two people in here defending, me and one other person, and we've been able to prevent them from getting our flag. That means there's 10, uh, 10 people on our team who are now available to go after the enemy flag. And if you can do that, um, you're either going to force the the op four um, for you non-military guys that's opposing force so you're gonna you're gonna force the op four to keep more defenders back thus making it easier on you to defend or you're gonna get to their flag because they're not gonna compensate for it now here I make an exception I don't want this flag to get out and I actually push the tank up to help capture it because it's out in the open here and I'm thinking without cover our, um, our teammates that are trying to recapture this flag are going to be really exposed. What you don't hear though in the background is me calling out the wretched cookie in the scout helicopter to go back to the base. I said when, when this flag gets recaptured it's going to return to base and we're not going to have anyone there because I'm out mid midfield. Uh, so he does that and, and I run back and get back on it and that's what you're seeing here. That communication is obviously really important. Um, the scout helicopter is arguably your biggest force multiplier in capture flag game modes. It has really good offensive capabilities. It can drop infantry on the enemy flag. It can pick them up and bring them back. It can do that a lot faster than a battle tank can. Uh, it also has the ability to roam the map and take down uh, flag runners really quickly. So a common way that people like to run your flag back is through the dirt bike. Uh, and the dirt bike is completely susceptible to the scout chopper. I mean, it that is its biggest nemef nemesis in the game. So, if the scout chopper is in the air and you grab the flag on a bike against us, we're going to call that out immediately. And our scout helicopter prioritizes that 
and takes down that flag carrier. And that's what you saw when I went out to reclaim the flag, uh, is that's exactly what happened. So you have your scout helicopter as a force multiplier and your main battle tank. Now check out this shot here. I have to boom on the run full speed. Uh, go out and I, another time where I push past that line to reclaim the flag. Basically, I need to own the flag in this tank. And I know I've done defensive gameplay in the tank before. It, it tends to be my niche. It's something I really enjoy. So uh, ultimately, it doesn't get done enough. If if so, if you're not going to do it, you know you can't expect uh, random teammates to always be doing defense for you. So you have to do that sometimes. Um, other force multipliers in this game on this map are the uh, Azrad and the Vodnik, the the AA jeeps. Uh, those are very powerful against tanks. Um, I tend to think they make good midfield vehicles because you can push them up and intercept incoming armor. They're very strong against tanks. You can also push them up and intercept incoming uh, scout helicopters. Um, they're pretty good against the dirt bikes. Uh, they can be hard to hit the dirt bikes with. Uh, but they they still provide you a pretty fast means of pushing up. However, that weak armor means they're not good for pushing into the enemy base. Um, so we talked about the dirt bikes. They provide force multiplication in that they enable you to grab a flag and return it extremely fast. Much faster than you could on foot just running with the flag. Um, but they're not as strong of a force multiplier as a tank or um, scout helicopter just because they're so easy to, to kill. And in the entrenched position, sitting here on defense, I'm looking at their spawn because I know generally they're going to come from in front of me. Now they can flank around behind me, but I also have the advantage of knowing where my flag is and knowing that that is their objective, that they have to go onto that little pedestal where that flag sits and pick it up, not in a vehicle, but on foot. This makes them very vulnerable compared to me who I can hide behind buildings, I can move out whenever I see them near the flag and I can shoot them because they have to come to me. So I'm a defender, I'm in a position of advantage. And this is ultimately why you want to have more attackers than defenders. You need to have more attackers than defenders. That's always true in military tactics and strategy. Uh, and being able to defend with the least amount of personnel is gonna enable you to win. Now, having said that, I consider defense to be the most important aspect to capture the flag in Battlefield 3. I believe if you can hold your flag indefinitely without the enemy taking it, you will ultimately win the game. It is very difficult to defend the flag for the full 20 minutes. If you are persistent in your attack, there's no tickets to worry about, and if you're persistent in your attack and you continue to pound away at the defense, they're going to get bored, they're going to get tired, they're going to make a mistake, <clears throat> and you're going to be able to grab that flag and get out of there on a dirt bike. At which point you have a really good chance of making it back to your base unless they're very coordinated and they're on top of their game taking out flag runners. So if you can defend the flag, which I've just said is quite difficult to do for 20 minutes, but if you can lock that flag down, you're going you're gonna to win the game because you will eventually get to their flag and here you see um, what they've done is they've recognized the difficulty in overcoming my tank and the spawn camping on our flag or, or watching our flag. And they've put forth a full squad dedicated just to removing that tank, knowing that that was the only way they were going to get in and take our flag. Um, it doesn't work. They don't get it out of there. <clears throat> but I do lose the tank, and we are um, without it for a while. The nature of playing public lobbies is someone else gets the tank on our team, a random player, and he uses it to push up on offense, um, which is fine. You know, all we needed was one cap. It's it's not a terrible idea because if we could get that one cap, the game's over. Uh, but I'm left here pretty much solo for a, quite a bit defending. You can see I've got a few teammates roaming around, but um, I do have Wretched Cookie in the attack uh, scout helicopter for quite a bit of it as well. But I just faced this, this Zerg rush of attackers just uh, continuing to pour in. Um, at this point, though, curiously, they've gone to a very defensive strategy. Their attackers are never more than two to three, maybe four, a, a full squad of guys. And that's fine because we're the ones with the lead. They have to take our flag two more times to win. We only need theirs once. Um, but it does become, you know, I run out of ammo, and I, I think Dutch is back here with me, because he Dutch oven. 
And, uh, you know, we're just trying to lock the flag down. Our, our random teammates tend to float around. Um, they're here sometimes. They're not. They get bored. They take off. That happens a lot. That's why ultimately having a dedicated defense unit is really important in capture flag as well. Uh, you know, we we will split it up. Like in this case, uh, Dutch and uh, Wretched tended to be midfield and attacking quite a bit because I was. They knew that I was there on defense to defend for them, and uh, that's what they just keep doing and keep chipping away at the defender's uh, flag, and eventually they're going to get through and get it. Um, you know, and whatever the rest of our team is doing is just, you know, it helps. <laughs> but here I finally do get the main battle tank back. Uh, teammate brings it up, and I get into gun for him, and he decides to get out. Um, thankfully, no one was there to steal it on the other team, but essentially, I guess I stole it from him. And I decide just to keep it because I'm pretty good in the battle tank. I don't know what he's like in the battle tank, his skill level. Maybe he's really good, maybe he's better than me, but. Uh, I'm not going to take that chance considering he already jumped out of it once. Uh, so I grab it and we're looking at the timer here. We're under two minutes. We're up by one flag. And this is where about capture flag and battlefield gets so intense. Because uh, through all the slowness of you know lock on weapons and frustration attacking, the last couple minutes of a close match get really intense regardless of what's going on the rest of the time. Speaking of lock on weapons, this map and lock on weapons are awful this is one of the worst maps with lock on weapons and in this game mode especially and uh, it's really I don't know what they were thinking making it so wide open with the lock ons I don't I don't know if the developers just don't play like that or they don't mind uh, but it gets frustrating you get you get shot a lot I don't know how rich cookie keeps the scout helicopter up as much as he does in this on this map because whenever I do it I get quad stingered within 30 seconds so uh, but he does a good job staying around that building and staying low and running. And, uh, you know, ultimately that combination of the tank and the uh, scout helicopter are what are going to win the game for you on a map like this. If you can uh, skillfully apply those force multipliers to defending and attacking, um, that's going to be the difference in the game. I think they had a pretty good strategy, the other team, the heavy defense. But ultimately, you know, our coordination and skill of our overall team are what end up winning this game for us. Uh, so uh, that's my discussion on CTF strategy at a team level. Applying force multiplier is going to vary map to map, and that's part of the fun in it. I hope you guys learned something from this, and I'm sure there will be some comments on maybe some things I got wrong. Leave them down below in the comment section. I look forward to reading them and having a discussion with you guys about them. For 11 Bravo Gaming, this is Fets, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.